There's a story that is told about Albert Einstein, the famous physicist of the early 20th century. Einstein worked at Princeton University in New Jersey, and he often traveled from there by train. He was known for his brilliant mind, but he was also known for being somewhat absent-minded. One day, Einstein was traveling from Princeton on a train, and when the conductor came down the aisle to punch the tickets, Einstein couldn't find his. He looked in his vest pocket, he looked in his pants pocket, he looked in his briefcase, but there was no ticket. The conductor was very gracious. Not to worry, Dr. Einstein. I know who you are. We all know who you are. You probably brought bought a ticket and just misplaced it. Well, as the conductor moved down the aisle, he happened to glance back. And he noticed that Einstein was on his hands and knees looking for his ticket under his seat. The conductor rushed down and said to him, Dr. Einstein, Dr. Einstein, don't worry. I know who you are. I'm sure you bought a ticket. Einstein stood up, looked the conductor in the eye, and said, young man, I too know who I am. What I don't know is where I'm going. <laughs>
never be ordinary again. The routines would never be routine again. The predictable world would never again be as predictable as they had known it. A voice came from the shore. Lads, have you caught any fish? They hadn't. Not a one. Try casting your net on the other side of the boat. As though these experienced fishermen had to fish all night from only one side. And then the miraculous hollow fish. Breakfast prepared for them by Jesus. The charcoal fire reminiscent of the one in the courtyard when Peter denied knowing Jesus an opportunity for Peter to replace his three denials with three professions of love and fidelity. What a lot going on in this simple story. William Sloan Coffin once said, Easter presents a demand as well as a promise. A demand not that we sympathize with the crucified Christ, but that we pledge our loyalty to the risen one. Jesus went on ahead, as he always does. The disciples met him at the Sea of Galilee for breakfast, and we continue to meet him in places that we never expected either. The good news of the resurrection is that Jesus is not in the tomb. Jesus is loose in the world. He goes ahead of us as he did with the disciples. He goes ahead of us as we struggle to live out the promise of Easter in what so often seems to be a good Friday world. Many years ago, a Zen master was invited to give a retreat at the Trappist Monastery in Spencer. Some of you may have been out there. It's about 50 or 60 miles from here. The monks use Zen in their meditation, and periodically they get a teacher come to the monastery to instruct them. But this time, the Zen master surprised them. He said, I have led many Buddhist retreats. But this time, I want to lead you in a Christian retreat. And so he asked for a Bible, and he spent that entire evening browsing its pages. The next morning, he called the leader of the monastery for his first interview. And some of you may know that in the traditional practice of Zen, these meetings can be quite confrontational. And so the abbot came in with some sense of trepidation, but he never could have been prepared for what he was about to hear. The Zen master leaned forward. He put his face only inches from the abbot's face, and he said, I like this New Testament. I especially like this idea of resurrection. Your challenge this week is to show me your resurrection. Don't tell me about it as something that happened in the past or something that's going to happen in the future. Show it to me now. Show me in the way you walk. Show me in the way you talk. Show me in the way you hold a cup of tea. Show me the resurrection in everything you do. Friends, that is our call today. You know, Easter was a couple of weeks ago. The lilies are gone. It's easy to be back just into our normal routines. But we are called to show forth the resurrection. We are called to live in the conviction that ultimately death will not prevail and evil will not have the last word. We are called to witness to the presence of the risen Christ in our midst, bringing newness and courage 
and ambition and hope. We are called to follow Jesus, who is always ahead of us, urging us on, claiming us as his own. We are called to look at this Good Friday world, look at it right in the face, and dare to sing an Easter song. We are called to be resurrection people in the way we talk, the way we walk, the way we hold a cup of tea, the way we do our jobs and raise our families and work to make the world a better place. And so in these weeks after Easter, may God bless each and every one of us as we try to show forth the resurrection. May God bless us in our living, in our loving, in our witnessing, and in our working to create a new and different world. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen and hallelujah.